is a place on the earth the Native American Lakota people called Makosicha, the land of changing earth, commonly known as Badlands. Hollywood's most famous movie stars leave the film capital to help the government sell war bonds. In 1942, as a part of the war effort, the U.S. government took the northern tier of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, now known as the South Unit of Badlands National Park, in order to establish the aerial gunnery range for bombing practice. My own family was evicted from this aerial gunnery range. They were given two weeks to vacate. And before the two weeks were complete, they were dropping bombs. In 1968, Congress authorized the return of the South Unit to the tribe as government held trust land to be managed by the Park Service as part of Badlands National Park. Badlands National Park South Unit is the only national park in the United States where an Indian tribe owns the land and the National Park Service manages the land and resources under the MOA, Memorandum of Agreement. Today, there are discussions still continuing about the relationship between the Oglala Lakota Nation and the National Park Service. Seven different management options have been proposed, ranging from continuing current management to transferring the management of the land back to the tribal government. Here, Oglala Lakota women share their viewpoints. It's time that the tribe take option too. I believe that the preferred management alternative allows us the opportunity to do what we want as tribal members. It's important for the United States of America to make right what they did wrong, and this is one way they could do it, by returning management of the South Unit of Badlands National Park to the Oglalasin tribe. The South Unit should go back into the controls of um, Oglala Sioux tribe. We have to have a tribal park, not a tribal national park. I think that it would be better if the, our people, the Lakota Oyate, managed the park as tribal lands. Ultimately, number seven, because that would be totally independent. The tribe will run it. We have done all the public comment we have done so far, that's basically what they said. They don't want the tribe to look at managing it because they can't manage a lot of things already. It doesn't say that we're going to be completely managed by the national park system forever. I think that it's going to allow us time to grow and be independent of politics. Preferred alternative looks out for the interest of the tribe here. While we have been under the, the mentorship of the National Park Service, I think the tribe needs to view this very seriously and look at how they would manage, perhaps seeking some um, hand-holding in the beginning, but assuring our own tribal membership that we want to preserve something for all of the generations to come. It's really the best gift that we can give them. Of reintroducing bison, raising our own income in terms of being able to sell art, work out there to visitors, to managing our resources, to creating employment out there. I think the preferred alternative does this for us. I think that the Oglala Sioux tribe is better equipped to handle those things. A transition period will allow us to train any of those people. When I look way down the road, what I see is that our superintendent in that area will be a tribal member, that every single ranger out there will be a tribal member. Tribal National Park would be managed by the tribe, I guess, but they would still be working with the National Park Service, and that would um, enable us to get funding. <laughs> With this being the first tribal national park, if that's what happens, I feel a little overwhelmed because you want to make sure that you capture tribal members' perspectives. And a lot of times that's not what some tribal members want, that's what other tribal members want. There's just a lot of history in that decision. 
but it's also really exciting that um, we'll have that opportunity to do that. And there's a story to be told out there. And I feel that this opportunity allows us to tell that story, to tell that story for today, tomorrow, and in the future. I'm hoping that we can deauthorize. I just feel that the control, you know, should go back, you know, you know to our people. That land is still in our name, and, and I feel that uh, the stronghold um, has a great significance um, to our people, not only to our people, but to all the other um, Lakota nations, because that was the last area where our people came, fled. I believe that um, the buffalo should be brought back more into the park. You know, when you bring the buffalo back, then that also brings back the plants. That can all happen still with the deauthorization. My family lost their home, their means of livelihood. They couldn't get all of their livestock out. They had nowhere to go. They lived in tents on the southern part of the reservation. My mother, my grandmother, my aunts, my uncles, all died waiting to go home. Some of us still want to go home. With option of uh, deauthorization, the tribe has been looking at mining development in this area here. We are not in favor of any type of mining here. That is the main uh, reason why I speak about a tribal park. I think for so long that we've given land away. And I am afraid that if it goes to the national park, that it will belong to them. We need our land back. Since the National Park Service has taken their administrative easement, We've had so many fossil excavations that the Badlands National Parks just give a permit and allow anyone to come and excavate here. Those artifacts that are in the Badlands, there's dinosaur bones out there. There's old things out there. For thousands of years, Lakota didn't even dig them up. And there's reasons why we're not supposed to. You know, there's a reason why it's called Makoshicha, the Badlands. We want to put a stop to that and allow these people and the fossils to rest here. It's dangerous for us because we don't know what anthropologists, what archaeologists is coming in, what are they going to write about the history of our people and science and turn into policies or whatever because that's the history of the United States against American Indians. Let us tell our story. You need to be in charge of it. Ours. So those are all the, the all the all these reasons. There's very important why we should go with option number seven. Listen to us. Listen to us and hear what we want. Write to your congressional delegates. Talk to your congressman and senator. Go to the National Park Service website and put your comments in. Make a comment. Comment publicly. You can tell your friends to tell their friends. I think they need to express that that land has to be managed with respect to the culture of the Lakota people and to make right the confiscation that was done in 1942. Help us.